equals fortune for the Big Sky Conference champion, Drake Schneider of Montana State. It's He'll worth saying night. that that decision uh, involving Amir Latin wasn't made until uh, last night. His team, his representatives appealed that decision. But obviously, uh, it has not gone their way. And as Addo just mentioned, that's why Drake Schneider, the 22-year-old from Wisconsin, is in lane nine. Here's TJ Holmes. Fifth at the World Championships in 2017 and 2019. An All-American while at Florida. I trained with this young man when he was at Baylor. And I can tell you, he's extremely disciplined and motivated. He actually coaches himself now, Otto, which we talked about yesterday. What a feat that is for him to be running so well. And you explain it's because he's a videographer, <laughs> so he has all the equipment to be able to film himself. Here's Kenny Selman, the 2018 U.S. champion in this event. He won his heat and, in fact, had the fastest time in qualifying last evening. Quavel Jordan, C.J. Allen, lanes two and three. And then Khalifa Rossa is in lane four. Keep an eye on Rossa as well. And out in lane eight, on the outside of Caleb Dean, is Isaiah Levingston. He was second at the NCAAs to Sean Burrell, who actually fell in the first round, the NCAA champion, not making it through to the semifinals. He played basketball and volleyball as a kid, but comes from a running family, his mom, his dad, his sisters, and he used to set up chairs in his backyard <laughs> to practice the hurdle. So been preparing for this moment for a long time. First semi men's 400 hurdles. That is Kenny Selman right there with the orange shoes, black outfit, off to a good start. Yeah, but Caleb Dean to their outside in lane seven has gone out the best through the first hurdle. Look also at Rosser in four. And you'll see these men keeping better pace in the semi. They try to take between 13 to 15 strides when they're running at their fastest. In the prelim, we saw some of the athletes struggling with that. But here, no stutter stepping. Everybody, business as usual. Rosser and Selman. Khalifa Rosser all in orange. That white headband on the inside as he takes the turn in the lead. It's going to be these two guys down the home stretch. Khalifa Rosser, Kenny Selman. It's going to be tight for that third spot. Isaiah Levingston, he'll get there. Top three through to the final. And that's a season's best for Kenny Selman. Rosser wasn't too far behind. So 48-51 for Kenny Selman. Khalifa Rosser, Isaiah Levingston are the three who advance. And here you see Rosser and Selman. And Rosser, who actually had the lead at this point, and Selman really able to go back to his arms and get over that final hurdle. A surprise that TJ Holmes wasn't in the mix. He looked really good yesterday, but really way back off the pace down the final 100 meters. But Kelly Selman and Rosser really executing this semi like a final. They looked really good, and they needed every bit of that to be able to one, get a season's best today and make it through to a very, very, very competitive final tomorrow. The results reflect who finished where. Selman Rosser Livingston go straight through. Now, CJ Allen and Caleb Dean will be on that bubble as far as being the next two fastest to go through to the final. World Championship silver medalist, Rye Benjamin, one of the best in the world. He's up next to see what he can do, particularly in light of yesterday's heat where Sonia Renato immediately identified him doing some stutter steps. He was just out of his rhythm. Later on, he said, it was just too <laughs> slow for me. Yep, and we focus on this gentleman for a reason. The list of people who have run faster than the guy on your screen in history. Kevin Young, the world record holder, and the twice world champion from Norway, Karsten Warholm. That's it. And behind him in lane five, that's Cameron Samuel, who looked great in the prelims, won his heat. He's a Pac-12 champion, third of NCAAs. Behind Livingston, who's qualified for the final. So these NCAA athletes certainly have a chance to be in the final. 
Charles Brockman, the 21-year-old, is right over there to the right-hand side, all in white in lane nine. David Kenziera, who really dug deep yesterday to make it to the semis. You'll see him start in lane eight. And then here is Jonathan Harvey in lane seven. Coming off his senior season for the Oregon Ducks, and I think there can't be anything cooler than competing in your biggest meets on your home track. Like you said, Otto, it definitely lifts you up, and what a stadium to be able to compete in and to call your home track. This, this track is absolutely spectacular. Good luck to all the college coaches recruiting against Oregon <laughs> in the future, because you bring a recruit here, chances are they're gonna sign. But Rye Benjamin, remember, he's already seen his training partner, Michael Norman, qualify in the 400 by winning here at the Olympic Trials, and he gets to train with him every day, and we're told that in practice, Michael Norman has no idea how to pace anything. This is the guy doing the pacing. Let's see if he paces a little better today. Benjamin in lane six with that white headband on. Let's watch his rhythm today versus yesterday. And he's off to a much better start. Like I always tell you, in the semifinals, your coach will tell you, run the first half of the 400 like the final. And then whatever you can take off in the final 200 meters, you do that. And this looks like Rye Benjamin in the semifinal. Well, what he's going to try to do here, Lee, is build this lead, as Sonia says, so that he can cruise home. And he's already built quite a lead. So that makes... These last three hurdles, a lot easier. David Kenzera, all in black, they're running in a solid and clear second. Cameron Samuel is coming on strong on the inside. Trevor Bassett is doing nicely. Aldrich Bailey, it's all right, Benjamin, who is just sauntering. Look at him. He's just jogging home. Okay. Between <laughs> hurdles 9 and 10, I swear he looked in the stands to see if his family was in there. I swear <laughs> I saw it. He took a glance in the stands. That's how far ahead he was. He's not the world leader by accident, <laughs> folks. And it's why we think that not only do we have a world record chance here, we don't know if anybody's going to push him to a world record, but when this event goes off in Tokyo, Look at him shutting it down. This is what we expected from Rye Benjamin. He is over a second and a half faster than the second person in this event. And in the semifinals, he was, I mean, the prelims, he was kind of all over the place. But today he's <laughs> meant business. And like you say, Otto, I definitely saw him look up to the family and say, hey, guys, see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> and Sonia, you called it. He ran the first 200 as though it was the final. And then you could see him say, okay, I have built enough cushion. Let me completely back off. I'm into the final. So through go Rai Benjamin, Cameron Samuel with that strong finish, and David Kenzera uh, is that third automatic qualifier. 